boosted 7875. Multiple options, killer horsepower. Let's figure out which one's for you. Hey everyone, Pat from Aeroflow Performance here. And today we're gonna to do a bit of an exploration into the 7875 series of boosted turbochargers. Uh, there's three different versions and they all have their little place in the range. So we're gonna go through and figure out, well, we'll point out what the variations are to start with and we'll give you a rough guide as to why you would choose one over the other. So the 7875 has been really popular um, as an option in the boosted range. Uh, it suits uh, really probably three liter engines through to six liter engines. Uh, I would say um, the Gen 1 has been uh, a killer option. We've seen a crazy amount of performance and, uh, and power in, in a wide range of vehicles on that. Um, the, the initial design that we first launched, the Gen 1, as you can see, uh, has a 12 blade compressor wheel, uh, it's flank milled, still billet um, like the rest of the range. It's also got this compact uh, front housing as well with the uh, 2.5 uh, inch outlet on the compressor housing uh, and it has the 10 blade GT turbine um, in the rear of it. Uh, being a 0.96 and a 1.25 T4 rear housing um, it's definitely made to flow some power, uh, but also with that design in the front wheel, it's a little more responsive. So this is a great turbo for something that's uh, a street car, maybe a standard bottom end um, LS or you know, a mild build three liter, uh, like a 2J or an RB perhaps. It's gonna make some serious power, but still be nice and responsive on the street. So um, you don't want something laggy that takes forever and you know, that's just not fun. So that's been, uh, that's been a killer option. Uh, the downside uh, of the Gen 1 is because of that uh, 10, uh, sorry, the 12 blade compressor wheel and the smaller uh, front housing is that when you get to larger boost levels like 20 PSI and up or 25 PSI and up, you start to find a bit of a restriction here. So the blades themselves actually create a restriction because there's so much material there that you're restricted by the amount of air that can get into the turbo. Uh, and then the outlet size is also becoming a restriction because once you've compressed that much air, the heat that it will generate, once you're reaching towards sort of 30 PSI, the size of the outlet is the restriction that's causing, causing that heat, um, which is gonna mean your charge air is hotter. That makes your intercooler or heat exchanger uh, job harder uh, and then obviously power starts to fall off. So how do we solve that? Well we go to the Gen 2. So the Gen 2 7875. Uh, basically we've made a few upgrades on this one uh, to step it up from the Gen 1. Uh, notable difference, you're looking at a 7 plus 7 uh, compressor wheel style. Uh, you're looking at uh, the 7075 billet forging that is then point milled. So it's a much more efficient compressor wheel. Then you also go to the larger compressor cover, uh, which has got the larger three inch outlet uh, on there, which as we just spoke about with the Gen 1, that overcomes that higher boost level uh, and uh, the restriction that was in the compressor housing. So much more efficient compressor wheel, much more efficient compressor housing, uh, which allows you to increase uh, the boost level, allows you to increase the potential flow uh, and more horsepower. So if you're going for a little bit more of a high RPM or a high boost level build, that's, that's the option. The other variation on this, uh, on this Gen 2 7875 is with the turbine wheel. It's actually a nine blade turbine wheel uh, on this one. So as we've discussed previously, the nine blade uh, over the 10 blade means more flow. So reduced back pressure. Uh, and that also means that it's 
a bit happier making more horsepower at higher boost levels on a larger capacity engine. Uh, so if you're going to something, say like a, uh, for example, an LS3 engine, it's a 6.2 liter engine. It's got reasonable compression at 11 to one. Uh, when you start making sort of 15 PSI and up on one of those, you're gonna be talking seven, 800 horsepower, you know, 20 PSI, you're gonna be heading towards that 900 horsepower range. Uh, and this is basically gonna be the option to do that. Uh, it's gonna breathe better. Uh, it's going to boost better. Uh, it's going to be more more efficient in uh, in its power production. So that's where the Gen 2 fits in. Now, when we go from there, we come to Gen 3. So this is the big daddy of the range, I guess you would say, the 7875s. Uh, we've thrown all of the power potential, uh, basically, at this, at this combination. Um, in saying that, it's still quite efficient, but it's not going to be your responsive, snappy little street uh, sort of combination. This is when you're really looking for big power. Um, you're looking for a high boost level uh, and you're running probably a larger, larger capacity engine or some form of assistance as well, maybe nitrous or something like that um, to really make some big numbers. Uh, if we start at the front, like always, you can see that uh, there is a six plus six uh, billet uh, point milled compressor wheel. Uh, with that really aggressive aero design on there. Uh, so you're talking larger spacing, so more air is gonna get in there. Uh, the point milling is making it more efficient, so it actually doesn't need to run at a higher RPM level to make the same sort of boost pressure. And then we've got this uh, larger again, um, sort of trumpet style uh, compressor housing. Um, that's also featuring the speed port compressor uh, like the, uh, sorry, the compressor speed sensor port, uh, like the rest of the range, and the 1.8 MPT uh, boost reference port. So you've got maximum flow, maximum intake, the most aggressive design uh, to make maximum horsepower. So this front cover is the same as our boosted 7975, uh, which is rated up to 1450 horsepower, by the way. So you've got all of those features in this um, really budget friendly, I guess you would say, 7875 series of Gen 3. The turbine, again, is a nine blade turbine. So you've got plenty of flow there. You've got minimized uh, back pressure. Uh, and then you've got the option of V-band or T4 uh, rear housing as well. So there's plenty of options here. This is the big guy. You're gonna be making the most horsepower with that. The Gen 2 is the one in the middle, and the Gen 1 is the most responsive for a basic street, street package. So the whole 7875 uh, range is a journal bearing core base. So it's a 360 degree journal bearing, uh, which means that you've got good protection from thrust using uh, the oil pressure uh, feed, and you also don't have to worry about any water cooling. Uh, because it is a larger bearing race, you'll flow more oil through there, it doesn't require a restrictor. What we do suggest though is a dash six oil inlet feed and then a good drain. So at absolute minimum dash 10 drain, but probably a dash 12 if you're getting into the high horsepower sort of region because you want all that oil to not only lubricate the turbo, but cool it down as well. Okay guys, now you know all about the boosted 78, 75 range of turbos. All that's left is for you to decide which one suits your application. To check them out, you can go to the local distributor, quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com.